Hello friends, in this video, let us understand things to be kept in mind while darkening or inking a plan drawing. First of all, I have made this plan in pencil. I will use these black ink micro tip pens for darkening the plan. Each of these pens has this number printed on it. This number tells us the thickness of line that it makes. A set of pen has pens with different thickness. The thickness is in millimeters or part of millimeters such as 0.1 mm, 0.2 mm, 0.4 mm, 0.5 mm, 0.8 mm and 1 mm. There is also a brush pen which is this one. Let us make lines with these pens to understand these variation in the line thickness. Check the variation in line thickness as we start drawing from 0.1 mm pen and increase the thickness of pen. For a good line, hold the pen perpendicular to the paper surface. So, with the increase in the pen number, we get thicker lines. This variety in the thickness will be useful for making a good building plan. The sequence of darkening should be as follows. First of all, the structure, that is the column. Then the walls, after that openings, followed by furniture, graphics, naming and dimensioning, human figures, finishes, vegetation and immediate building surroundings. This sequence has logic. Starting with elements closest to the section plane and ending up to elements farthest from the section plane. To understand the advantage of using variation in line thickness, let us first darken the whole drawing using a thin pen. In this case, we are using a 0.4 mm pen first. As this drawing slowly builds up, observe that visually each line has the same appeal since each has been drawn using a 0.4 mm thickness pen. When I say each line, I mean line of the column, walls or windows or firm lines and dotted lines, all of them. Thus, this windowsill and this wall both have the same appeal since they were drawn using one pen thickness 0.4 mm. Let us now use 0.8 mm pen to increase the thickness of those lines which are closest to the section plane and are being cut by that plane. These are the column or structure and walls. You can see now that the columns are looking bolder than the rest of the lines. Let us do the same for the walls also. It is true that in profession you will make drawings using CAD softwares. But we are doing this exercise to understand the discipline of lines to make a drawing more appealing using variation in line thickness. The digital medium will also give you the facility of using different line thicknesses or line weights. Once you make it a habit, the medium does not matter. Let me darken or shade the columns as it is generally done. 
this will now differentiate it from the walls. Next to be darkened are the door symbols which tell us the hinge point and the swing of the door. The remaining elements in the drawings can be drawn with 0.3 mm or 0.4 mm pen. I am using a 0.4 mm pen. These dotted lines are the edges of elements which project beyond the wall lines and are above the section plane. These are elements like the weather shade, balcony above, cantilever floor above, the flight of the staircase, etc. etc. This is the depiction of a wardrobe in bedroom. Let us now darken the furniture units using a 0.3 mm or a 0.4 mm pen. This is the kitchen platform with sink. Every building has a plinth which makes its ground floor higher than the immediate ground next to it. Never forget to show the steps leading up to the building at places like entrances and any other such conditions. This is the dotted line of the balcony cantilevered above. All steps and staircases should be marked up or down depending on where they are going from that particular floor. Also. Mark the edge of difference in flooring level as between veranda and living or bedroom and toilet. Write up or DN for down at the base of the arrow showing rise or going down. Each space should have a name and its dimension in the form of length into breadth or horizontal into vertical dimension. Try to align the text horizontally and vertically when placing them on drawing. This is the graphic for section plane, showing the location of the section plane and the direction in which one has to view. And the name of this section is AA. You can see here that the naming and the dimensioning has been aligned horizontally. The graphic of level in plan shows the level value of that surface from some datum. It is written as LVL and its value is in meter. The ground floor plan of any building is incomplete if its context is not made. What is this context? It is the immediate surrounding, the pathways, the pavements, the flower beds, the plinth protection, trees and vegetation, the immediate surrounding buildings if they are also visible in the drawing. The moment you show these, the drawing starts looking more realistic. You can experiment in depicting the hardcover of paving blocks or stones. This may be properly drafted or shown in an informal way. These may be shown completely or you can leave some incomplete members also. You may use different line thicknesses also and draw lighter lines. Whatever you do, do not make casual lines which means draw each stone properly. Use a circle or graphic to show trees and shrubs also. The circle of a tree should have realistic diameter equal to the spread of a normal tree which you have selected.
This is the pavement at the side of the building. Human figures in presentation plans make the drawing very realistic. Add a person moving around, somebody sitting. It also lets you understand the size of spaces. Flooring pattern should be done at the end so that hidden parts under the furniture or the naming can be shown that way. Experiment with dotting also, but keep a pattern or a system of dotting. For example, say dense on the top left and less dense on the bottom right corner. This completes the basic darkening of a plan drawing. This lecture is meant to give you a start. You may experiment on your own also, but the system of line thickness remains and the use of standard depiction for graphics also. Do not create your own graphics which are complicated or difficult to understand. The underlining fact is that you are doing a technical drawing and not a painting or sketching. Let us now color this plan. One important point while coloring is that you color a plan to make the reading of information better. You are not making a painting. So, choose colors which do not subdue or kill the drawing information like the structure, wall, openings, naming, etc. To start with, use lighter family of colors like orange, yellow, light pink, etc. Let us make a few rules. Green is only for vegetation. Blue is for water or wet areas like washrooms. In bigger building plans, yellow for circulation areas like corridors and passages. In bigger building plans with repetitive areas, you may use one color for a type of space. For example, suppose you have a school building plan. You may use one color for classroom so as to make their identification on drawing better. I am using brush markers for coloring. You may use plastic crayons or pencil colors also. For plastic crayons or pencil colors, put one thick sheet under the drawing sheet for better transfer of color. Experiment putting a textured paper under the sheet or draw your drawing on a textured sheet. The coloring comes as a textured pattern. I have chosen orange color to color those walls which have been cut by the section plane. Mind you, the walls under the windows are not cut by the section plane. Thus, they have not been colored. For floor of the bedrooms, I am using yellow. The coloring is done only on the floor and no coloring is been done on the furniture. This helps in better visibility of the furniture. The washroom is being colored in blue. It can be lighter shade of blue also. I'll use a plastic crayon to color the other washroom or the toilet. Since the paper is fixed on a plastic base, the color is not having any texture. This line between two spaces may either depict level change or change in the floor finish. I'll finish this part also with color. A lighter shade of fluorescent yellow is being used for the passage, living room dining and the kitchen. Watch how suddenly the furniture has become more visible due to the coloring of the flooring. Veranda and kitchen will also have the same color.
You may experiment with variation in shades of color, but do this with a system. In this, I have chosen left hand bottom corner and some of the edges. Shading in dark colors may be done carefully so that the drawing does not become gaudy. The steps have not been colored so as to differentiate them from the floor. You may choose to color them in a different color or same color. Random paver blocks have been colored in brown. Vegetation is to be colored in green, but pure one shade of green does not bring life in a drawing. I generally use a mix of yellow, brown, light green and dark green and in that sequence. This is done to get the right effect for green, especially for the big trees and the ground. Take a base color of yellow, then put brown on it, then put light green evenly over it. After this put dark green on the selected patches to get shading. Use a system for shading. The ground has been colored that way. For this plastic crayons have been used. The shades of yellow and brown visible behind the shades of green give a realistic feeling of the ground. Choose one sided stroke or cross shading or even shading. Experiment and generate your own style. I have also tried putting blue in patches after brown. As I said earlier, put dark green in selected patches. Here I have put it at the meeting of edges of building and the ground. Selectively, green has also been used between the paving stones to show grass. This is the final outcome of the exercise. Use hierarchy of line thickness. Depict openings, furnitures, proper graphics, naming and dimensioning, human figures and floor finish, vegetation and immediate surroundings and complete the floor plan. Hope this was useful. Thanks for watching and do subscribe the channel.